And like, that's it. But then someone came in and they were like, yo, Kyle didn't like Dune 2. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? And they're like, he said it was different from the book. And I was like, you didn't like it? Did you like Dune 1? I don't remember if we spoke about uh, Dune Yeah, 1. I liked the first Dune movie. Um, the reason I like Dune 2 is because it's terribly edited and paced. Um, everything that's on the screen is beautiful and perfect. It's just, it feels like there's an hour of movie missing. I love mm. Dune 2 for what's there, but it's ruined by what's not there. The, you read the, the book the, before Dune 1? No, I haven't read movie? any. No, oh, you didn't read any no, of it. No, I'm just saying, like, I, as I watch Dune 2, the movie, it's like, whoa, where are we? It, mm. There's just a scene, Zendaya lands in an omnithopter at one point, and it's like, where'd you get that? We're not going to mm. talk about where you got a fucking, like, aircraft? Oh, you just have it now, and here you are. Like, we spend the whole three quarters of the movie talking about, is Paul going to go south of the worm line or whatever, the storms? Then he's just like, oh, the base got blown up. Shit, better go. And he's there. And not only is he there, he's at the temple. And not as he at the temple, give me that shit. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> and, like, and then it's like, boom. Wait, where are we? Oh, Paul's been in a coma for so long, a crowd has gathered now. We just lost mm. all that. We lost the whole scene where somebody told everybody. We lost the scene where everybody reunited in the storms. We didn't get to see any of Paul's mother like changing the, the fundamentalists over to Paul's side. There would have been some kickback. There would have been a whole plot line there where she's got to like get her tendrils into people's minds and, and convince them. There, there was so much of that movie missing. And then all of a sudden, um, Thanos shows back up. And it's like, damn, give Thanos a little build up. And then once he's there, he, he's just like, he's not around long enough. He doesn't get to say much. He just kind of has a campfire chat or two. The movie all the way through it has issues like this where it's like, ah, oh, shit. When Paul goes on his, I'm going to be a fucking Fremen now journey. It's like, go as far as the eye can see and touch the fucking shiny dick and come back. Mm-hmm. Beware of the serpents and the genies and the monsters and the ghouls. And oh, you're back already and you didn't even go. You just been chilling with your girlfriend. We just skipped the whole journey, any, th- any growth that would have come from it, and you're learning how water filters work now. That was 30 seconds ago. I, it didn't, it upset me because I was expecting so much and got so little. I miss, it's missing an hour. Did you, did you like uh, Blade Runner 2049? Yeah. yeah. I oh, I didn't watch 2049 yet. I'm wait, what is it? Wait, wait, Blade Runner. What, what's it? Oh, the first one you saw. You, you, yeah, I've oh, seen yeah. the first one on all the cuts. I've seen like the definitive cut and the director's cut and the fucking cinematic cut and the Blu-ray cut and the fucking laser disc cut and all that mm, shit. I don't actually like, man, I really don't even, I've tried to, I, I, I'm always like, something's wrong with me. I got to try again. I don't like the original Blade Runner, really. I don't, I don't love it. I just, pre- I would say I appreciate it. And there yeah. are certain scenes in it that are magnificent. There's a scene where Rutger Hauer at the end is, is talking about the things he's seen. He's this android that only has a four-year lifespan, but he's S tier in intelligence and physicality and and everything that a person can be. But he's he's come back to Earth to steal a little more life, and he's realizing now that he's not going to get it. And as he dies next to Harrison Ford, he's talking about the things he sings. I've seen fire ships burn in front of nebulas in the dark clouds of the galaxy. And he's just like going through this crazy life that he's lived in four years and, and talking about the hopelessness of it all. And then I love that scene and I love like two or three more scenes and the rest of it. I'm just like, I'll well, sit I, here I, for I, it. Was, yeah. Blade Runner 2049, I thought was so good and I loved it. But there's like I, I'm, I'm also looking and I'm like, oh, I could cut 30 minutes out of this movie. Uh, and, and in Dune 1, I, I thought Dune 1 was great, but I, I hadn't read the book. So I saw Dune 1 and I was like, that was so awesome. Then I read the book. And there was a lot of things in the book where I was like, oh, that's what the movie was showing me. And now that I know, that's as good as you could show that in this movie. That's a great job. Uh, And then so when I saw the second one, I had read the book. And there are certain things in the book, like, you know, Paul has the, the, the guy that he kills, Janice, that he kills. Like, he raises his child and and and, and st- it is with his yeah. wife uh-huh. and that i mean the, you see the, that coming and and the baby anya taylor joy she's actually like she comes out and she's a baby that is a person and mm. i was just like i wonder if they're gonna put a fucking snapchat filter on a baby how are they gonna show well this? that's how paul's little sister is supposed to be too yeah. or at least that's yeah. how she was depicted in the og film yeah that's how she was supposed to be she was supposed to be very like upsetting so, yeah that she's like you know uh she she kills uh Baron Harkonnen and uh, yeah, I said they made changes and they made <laughs> changes. And, that. Yeah, and and I I when I saw the first Dune, I was like, oh yeah, that was great, that was great. And I tell people like, you see Dune, and they're like, I don't know, it was long. I was like, yeah, 
Or they're like, ah, it was, I thought it was boring or confusing. And I'd be like, yeah, but when I, I loved it because Mm. my, my rate, my main piece of reference and not that it's any good, but it's it's the OG movie from the eighties. So I've seen that many times and I've seen the extended version. So I know the fight at the end and how it goes and, and all I was watching the entire three and half hour movie or whatever it is waiting on that sword fight at the end. I wanted to see Paul face down against whoever sting was going to be. And by the way, like, that final villain that Paul has the sword fight with, why was he introduced so late in the story? If you're going to make Bautista be a, a failure, essentially, and just like the muscle, the heavy, like the, he could be in the background and have this guy with the big bald head be like the brains all along and like, like, or at least have him there. You, and get, be like, you get a lot, actually, like the book. Of course. He, he yeah. does come later in the book, but then when he comes, you literally get as much of his perspective as Paul's. Like you get a lot from his point of view. Yeah. Um, I love that actor a lot, Austin Butler. He was upsetting uh, looking. He was crazy. He killed that scene. Um, all, all of his scenes, but he's just, yeah, the, the whole thing. Like I thought when when Dune, when I saw Dune 2, I Star actually Guard thought. better. I, I have a hard time because I'm, I'm actually an Austin Butler fanboy now, so I can't, I can't even. But now I'm looking at now I like I saw Dune 2 and I was like, my takeaway was this movie was so good. I loved it so much. When I tell people like you see Dune 2, they're like, no, nah, I didn't see the first one. I'm just like, skip it. Go see the second <laughs> one. You, they're, you're going to catch up. It's really not that like that's fair. Like there's really like someone could sum up what happened in four sentences and that's all the information you'll need because all the sexy little intricacies and fine details you wouldn't get from the first movie anyways. You would get if you read the book. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of things like even the Gom Jabbar, the needle at the neck. Like I, when I read the book, I was like, oh, that's what's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, you you did it perfectly. You depicted mm-hmm. it perfectly. But if I had to guess from the other way, which I did, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And there's a lot yeah. of things like that because the whole plans within plans thing, and this is what's hard about the adapt ad- adaptation is something like the plans within plans, like Lado's like, uh, like uh, he is someone that's trying to assassinate him. Uh, Paul Atreides dad is trying to, someone's trying to assassinate him. And in the book, the, the mentat, the guy who are like the computers, he mm-hmm. thinks it's Lado's wife, Paul Atreides mm-hmm. mom. And so in the book, because you have the benefit of a book, Leto really doesn't believe it's his wife, but he's acting like he thinks it's his wife because he wants the assassin to know that he's not still looking for the assassin. Now, try and show that in a scene is hard and it just comes off confusing. And but then you go back and you read it and rewatch. You're like, oh, that's good. So I did have the benefit of the second one of the having the book to like explain all these things. And then I started to like decisions. I'm like, oh, I'm glad he didn't have to have Janice's <laughs> wife and kid. I thought the the, the ad, like how what they showed of uh 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 what's it called Prime uh Gaty Prime the plan. I thought it was sick. oh that was crazy. That when was we so go to cool. the Harkonnens. We go yeah. to the Harkonnens planet and and they don't they just say that they have a dark sun, but it's sort of like they have no light spectrum there. It's just black and white. And so yeah. the fireworks are these. It, I, I've seen fireworks like that kind of. They do these like backwards fireworks for daytime fireworks. Have you ever seen them? It's kind of like a smoky thing. No, that's but sick though. These were like negative light up there going off. That was cool. But yeah, yeah I was all, this like it was. I was like, disappointed. Was I was disappointed. Yeah. Um, but but if people like it, they should like it. You know, my opinion doesn't matter. I'm not going to like everything everybody likes. No, I, yeah, I I thought it was uh, <laughs> like exciting. I thought it was more like your thing with the pacing is interesting because you're like, I need more from this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that. You give me a three hour movie and I'm like, oh, I, I I looked at my watch and there was an hour left. I was like, fuck, I wish there was two hours left. Shows kind of spoil us because we get to go into everything. And this Dune could have benefit from being a I wish- deeper dive. But a lot of people aren't advanced like you. They don't they don't look at a three hour thing. And go wish I had more. They're like, oh, that was long. I wish the entertainment model had a third tier because right now you've kind of you've got movies which are 90 minutes to two and a half hours if you want to be marketable somewhere in there. I don't know what Oppenheimer was. It's definitely on the high end of that. But then you've got TV shows, which nowadays make eight to 12 episodes a season with almost unless you're talking about law and order or procedural drama Mm -hmm. or something like that. But I wish that I wish we still got shows like star trek with 20 fucking episodes season yeah. but then there was that third tier those eight se- those eight episode seasons for things like shogun and chernobyl and 
And some of the Stephen King stories lend themselves super well to an eight episode miniseries. The Outsiders was really good. But like if you were going to do uh, Salem's Lot or anything like that, it's like, bro, you cannot do Salem's Lot in two and a half hours. It needs to be a <clears throat> eight hour like masterpiece thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I loved uh, I, I just thought it was like it felt like an action movie. It felt more thrilling mm-hmm. than than the previous one. Like I feel like a, do, do we all agree Doom was boring as fucking not good? I thought after seeing Doom he 2, liked. I could see why people would find Doom 1 boring, let's say. Mm-hmm. But I I but then again, like I'll look at a shot and it and this is like what happened with Blade Runner is it hangs on some shots <laughs> and I know a normal person, I know it's 4 seconds too long for them that shot. I'm mm-hmm. aware of that. And the first one was like a very beautiful movie, but the second one for me felt more like Dark Knight to Batman Begins. Okay. I, I actually love Batman Begins more than Dark Knight, but it doesn't have the Joker. It's not fucking crazy mm. exciting. So I see why Dark Knight is more popular. Mm-hmm. Dune felt think- like Batman Begins. And then also started to interrupt, but Paul Atreides has a transformation in Dune 2. And when that transformation happens and the actor does it, he embraces it so well that I'm like, oh, whoa. He turned it on. It felt like the whole previous movie and a half was a muted performance because of how much he turned it on now. So the now end, we he's got the like, character and now it's over. He spends the whole movie denying that he's the guy. Like, it ain't me. I don't want it. And then all of a sudden he's like, I am the, I am him. <laughs> I am him. <laughs> and somebody's like, you, you're not. He's like, you wet your fucking panties at night thinking about your dead granny, boy. And he goes, oh, you're yeah, him. You're fucking him. Somebody goes, I'm not so sure about that. He's like, your wife has a dick. Your wife has a dick and you suck it. Oh, you're him, and, and, and it's like he melts the opposition with humiliation. Oh, I love that like scene, but that's fucking hilarious. Out. Yeah, it's like, exactly. I'm not him. I'm yeah. I'm him. This is the first about thing me. about Dune I found interesting in years. I, I, I'm like, if we keep talking about Dune, I'm gonna get my pull up rack. I'm gonna set it up behind me. I'm gonna hang my dude. They got a show. Dune MMO oh, coming sky. out that looks <laughs> sick. <laughs> I will auto asphyxiate myself to death back there just so the audience has something to watch <laughs> <laughs> rather than this dude dog where he's killing me. I apologize. Okay. He did it. So it was me. It was me. It was me. I'm just hitting it back. Wait, we I'm didn't just even trying to in... fix it. Can we, just trying to... can we talk Star Trek? Wait, we didn't even get into Hell Divers yet. <laughs> they're making another season. They're making another season because they were already bought in, but it doesn't matter. It did poorly. I got, I'm looking at an article right now that only. 37% of the people who started the series on the first episode finished the first season because it was just, I didn't finish just it. a, yeah. See, it was just a ridiculous nonsense. I, adaptation. I didn't begin out of protest and you, I, I didn't begin out of protest either. I'm like, no, nah, we're not, we're not fucking watching your woke Lord of the Rings. But I want, yeah. I want Tolkien. I want from his lips to the screen. That's what I want. Just like Peter Jackson did a very good representation of Lord of the Rings well, for the most part. He really did. Like you can make alterations without up. There are upsetting alterations that you can make, though. There, there are pandering alterations that you can yeah. make, and and those they like, made are, Galadriel some like warrior princess. It's like that's not your they're, they're, in like this girl power thing. They're trying to take what Galadriel's actual power was, which was like being a strong like someone in tune with magic and whatnot, and minimizing that and making her power just a male kind of power, swinging swords and fighting, and that's not what that character is. And so Lord, Lord of the Rings failed and will be canceled after whatever the current contract they have is because they didn't remain true to it. And there aren't enough people who aren't already into Lord of the Rings that want desperately to get into it, that it can support that. Like no one, like people who weren't familiar with Lord of the Rings who like girl power movies aren't going to watch that whole series because they're not into that world. You know, like it, it needs to be a good adaptation for existing fans in order for it to be successful. I'm still hung up on Harley's movie watching baggage, right? Like I, I'm dude, with my, my mind has been fucking racing on this ever since he said it. He is the Taylor Swift of movie watching, right? She's 34 years old. She's single. <laughs> she has enough baggage to fucking fill the undercarriage of the airplane single handedly. She has a song or something called forever is the sweetest con, right? She'll never love like she once did before. She'll always view these things suspiciously. And 
Harley will never be as excited for Star Wars as he was when he was nothing ten years ago. Yeah, I never get excited for anything. Too now. much. <laughs> I get excited, but my, the, the ceiling Harley, has to be very return? high. Harley, I want. How did the Emperor <laughs> return? Oh, somehow. But somehow, <laughs> thank you. Yes, that is the. Answer. I always think about that. What's crazy about that? Survey that says. Thing. What's so crazy somehow. about somehow he returned is like <laughs> that happens at the beginning of the movie. And so he's post up that and he's like, yeah, somehow the emperor returned. So let's say if you were, you were a guy there that were nearby uh, and, and let's say that somehow the emperor returned, like, let's say you heard Poe say that and then you got on a ship and you were traveling to another planet because that's what you're doing or a courier or whatever. And you get to this other planet and it takes five days to get to that other planet. You sit down and there's a guy there and you just a buddy. You're like, yo, did you hear somehow the emperor returned five days later after this 30 year buildup of the strongest Sith ever, whatever. He'd be like, oh, somehow the emperor returned this guy after five days. would be like, oh, no, uh, no, he's dead again. Yeah, they killed him again. So somehow he returned after 30 years and he also gets beat that same week. <laughs> that's yeah, a like, bad, they have that's like a, a bad big return. crazy battle, right? Like the Emperor probably used like lightning on everybody, and like maybe from the sky, like the whole sky became lightning hands. Like, they a shoot thunder, the Death Star, a thunderstorm encircled him. Maybe like some Voldemort end game shit. Mm -hmm. They didn't just like cut him in half or anything, did they? Yeah, no, he didn't even stand up and died. <laughs> he killed himself. He He killed himself. He died the same way Tyrion did, just like a crossbow walk. Yeah, she, and she yeah. literally like she was. He, he was a troubled he, man. He, he was electrocuting her, and she had a lightsaber. But then she took a second lightsaber and made it, and like put them together, and that somehow bounced it back. And uh, it was just so dumb because as a huge Star Wars fan, it's like you're gonna beat him broke out with two shit. lightsabers. The lightsaber is. Like and and I I know a lot of people go crazy with my take that I liked episode eight, but I did want them to cook. Last Jedi when they were doing weird decisions and stuff, I was like, hold up, let them finish, let them finish. Then when they finished, I was like, oh, this ended so bad. Everything before it was bad, but mm -hmm. in episode eight, I love that they like that Luke Skywalker threw the lightsaber, and I love that he beat them at the end of that movie by projecting force, projecting himself in a super pat. Like nobody was hurt. He stopped this huge uh, army from destroying all his friends and no one was hurt. No one got hurt. And that was cool. That's like next level of Jedi taking two lightsabers, like a lightsaber. It's just a fucking tool. And even the emperor, like he, he only used the lightsaber to insult Jedis by beating them with their own tool, but he never had respect for it. So it just put, That's it was cool. just the wrong emphasis on shit. And, it, and I hated it. It really bothered me. Is that uh, what the we, emperor really did? Like he used, yeah, he used he used his own lightsaber to insult the Jedi. Like whenever that's he would quickly beat down them under as well. Okay, that's that's you cool. I didn't know that about the Emperor. Under. I've seen it. I think we watched it together. I love Quigley Down. Never watched Quigley Down. What is that? It's Tom Selleck movie. A fan or... of Quigley Down Under. It is this it's... little known silly movie where like an old West guy who is a good shot goes and saves Australia. Did I come close? But Kyle showed me a movie actually when I was at his place. It was They Live. I had never seen They Live or heard of it before oh and my. watched it at Kyle's house. And I was like, when did this exist? And it wasn't like a meme as it is now or reference this Duke Nukem shit. Mm -hmm. So I saw it and I was like, what the fuck? It was like a whole new thing. I was like, that's where he wears the glasses. Yeah, yeah, and you can, and you see. can see. The okay, movie. I've actually seen They Live. That was a good, mm. probably on Kyle's that's recommendation a, too. That was a good movie. So that's Rowdy Roddy Piper, the the wrestler, in, like acting and doing a hell of a job. Um, it's it's a, it's a very good movie. Uh, but what I was gonna say is like Quigley Down Under is Tom Selleck and Alan Rickman, and basically mm. it's during the time when the the ranchers in Australia were literally genociding the Aboriginals, just just murdering them, and so they hire Quigley from the Wild West. They put out this bounty and he, he's like, I come here to, you know, as a he's a long range sharpshooter and he thinks he's there to shoot dingoes that are preying on this guy's cattle. But he's there to kill the aboriginals. And the bad guy is Alan Rickman, who owns the big ranch. And the whole the fun part is that Quigley can shoot like, I don't know, twelve hundred yards away with his ridiculous custom made rifle. And so it, so that they like beat the shit out of him and they leave him for dead. And but he happens to get the rifle and the, and they're riding as fast as they can from Quigley because they know he's got that rifle back there. He's like <laughs> looking back behind him faster, faster. And Quigley's taking his time getting mm -hmm. this old timey antique rifle loaded, 
getting the big old um, peep sight adjusted and twisting it. And he's hurt, too. There's blood in his eye. So for a minute, he staggers and fixes some dirt in his eye. And mm -hmm. then he's boom. And it's like three or four seconds later, the cowboy gets fucking shot. And the bullet is so big, it just blows his chest out the front. And he flies off the horse. And Quigley's like, yeah. I'm literally going to watch this, by the way. It's pretty and, fucking hard. Oh, and the ending I won't is tell great. Wait, I was going to tell the ending, but he's going to watch Wait, it. Wait, no, no, I'm actually going to watch it. I actually. Yeah, <laughs> the ending's fun. Yeah, Tom Selleck, good, he's a good fucking actor. Wait, he's still Tom, alive. On a, He's he's one of those actors that managed he? to get like a TV show that they just make infinite seasons of. And I think old people watch it. There's a show called 79. Blue Bloods. Mm -hmm. They even make, mm -hmm. there's like 20 seasons of Blue Bloods or something where he's like a police commissioner or something with a mustache. I laugh in Supernatural. He was drafted oh, to the Vietnam Vietnam. Twenty war, seasons. By the way. You're adorable. And you know what? He's not. You know what? You're going to be psyched for Harley. I, I'm, I bet I'm the first person to tell you this is happening. There's going to be an R-rated live action Ninja Turtles movie called The Last Ronin. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I, not. I don't want it I to know. be R-rated. Wait, I what? did like the newest Ninja Turtles movie. Was great. I realized I like my. That was kind of cool. I like my Ninja Turtles when they're teenagers. Uh, it was great. It was fun. Uh, but this story, I never read this story, but I know what it's about. I, it's about the other Ninja Turtles. Three of them die or are killed, and one oh. of them is alive, and he wears their their yes. colors as a reference point, and he has, like, a broken shot. I think it's Raphael, and he has, like, one side. He has the bow. He has a sword. He has, like, leftovers from the turtles. Dead and brothers. Just, like, yeah, and it's always sound like such a dark and crazy story. So is I'm dead, like, you know what? Dead? Cool. He's got to be. I think he's the I, only thing left. Here's he what I wanted to be. 90. I wanted to be like, shut up. <laughs> 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 and rats. How long does a giant mutated rat live anyway? Long, like dude. 30 years tops, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, I want it to be like John Wick style where they stomp Master Splinter down. Like like they outnumber Master Splinter and like he holds his own. But then they like net him or use some cowardly tactic against mm. him. And then they just stomp him out. And the and like Raphael or whoever Big it is, splinter like, death scene, please. Yeah, I want to be I want to be a real tearjerker, like when that puppy gets stomped. Shredder, no, Shredder's dude. like, bite the curb. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a he's got an SS tattoo on his arm for some reason. <laughs> no, I think doesn't Disney own that shit? Doesn't Dis it's Marvel, right? Isn't it, is it under the Marvel umbrella or the I don't Hasbro? think it's Marvel. By There's I don't no know. way they're in the know. Marvel universe. Wow, you'd be uh, surprised. Predator is alien. First is. of all, one hundred percent. Do you know what, how the turtles got mutated, Taylor? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Iron Man's runoff. Like what? I, like what? You're so <laughs> close. You're so yeah. close. It was actually the same canister that fell off of the truck spill that blinded Daredevil and gave him his powers. Oh my god, I forgot that this. That's true. Yeah. So, so during that crash that created Daredevil, because he's a he wow. Daredevil, it created child. three heroes and a fucking. But I, I don't no. think it was official. Like it was official, More. but the the artist they oh, drew I like see. they story wise they did that. They they made it that, that like crash it was, put the goo and it turned Daredevil into some sort of superhero, and then it goes into the tunnels and it turns the turtles into a superhero. And the guy that taught Daredevil how to fight, his name is Stick. And the guy that taught the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles how to fight, Splinter. Taylor Splinter. Hey. Ah. Oh, okay. ah, the pieces are falling into place. What a what a ridiculous universe they've made. <laughs> <laughs>